subscribe button on our YouTube channel and you'll be part of that football family. If you hit the bell, you'll get all the notifications of all the video content that we're putting up there. Our reporters out interviewing managers and players and, of course, uh, no shortage of opinion as well you'll get on the show. Maybe a wee bit of banter and more. Uh, on a regular basis now, I'm sure you'll agree, uh, a great chance to look at people's legs uh, until <laughs> rain and snow uh, starts to kick in. Uh, hopefully that's yeah, soon. That's lovely this week, Ruffy. Uh, is that right? Yeah, I've never, I've never wanted... Uh, uh, before, you know. Well, I was going to say, I've never wanted snow <laughs> more than now. Speedos on. Yeah, <laughs> that, that would get us off here or onto, or onto a different section of YouTube. Anyway, apart from anything else, uh, there's lots to discuss um, on the programme and let's get into the meat and bones of it. Um, I'm going to read out a couple of messages. I always like to do that. Uh, you can do that by downloading our app and you can post a message in there or indeed record yourself on video um, and we can drop it into the programme. Um, Harry is in Canada and he says, I've just listened to your post-game report again. You show your bias towards hearts. <laughs> yes, the better team, but no mention of the first 15 minutes or so. The chances Hibs created, the world-class save from Craig Gordon, the near misses by Hibs. Take off those maroon-tinted glasses. <laughs> the better team, um, yes, the better team um, should have won, but no one mentions the near misses early on for Hibs. Um, and of course, John Beaton, uh, per usual. Uh, some of his calls against Hibs were poor, blatant elbowing, blocking off Hibs players. Um, so he's not happy with me. So I thought I'd read it out anyway, Ruffy. You've got to take it on the chin, haven't you? Um, and then... Um, Harry's spot on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, Harry. well, let, Harry. let's get into it. Isn't he what he loses hospitality. Right. <laughs> yeah, I wish you had. I wish you had hospitality, <laughs> Art. So anyway, <laughs> apart from anything else, the roar that I heard uh, from Easter Road was unbelievable when Martin Boyle scored. It was written in the stars, but boy, he left it late. Yeah, he did. Uh, I didn't think it was going to come. Um, as we said, Hearts had the chances in the second half to put Hibs to bed. I think if it goes to two nothing. The game's done. I think I don't think Hibs had two goals in them, you know. But as long as it's one now, I thought Hart started to drop deeper and deeper in the last five ten minutes, and you could just you could just send something. They'll get a chance. Big Bashiri missed a chance a header, which I thought that was Hibs's opportunity. Yeah. And then great great run for Johan and uh, and Martin Boyle gets his sailing in the middle. And, whew, priceless goal, you know, for a guy who's <laughs> not been kicking a ball and was eating macaroni and cheese in the morning. Yeah. He certainly came on and ran about and uh, and made himself a, a hero for Hibs supporters. So. Four points out of six for Hibs. I think it's a good start this season. The best is still to come for this Hibs team. Yeah, that's an interesting point you make. We'll discuss that in detail. But of course, I did ask Martin Boyle when he found out he was playing. Uh, last night after my, my homemade macaroni and chips, uh, <laughs> when I got the phone call. So yeah, that's when I went into panic, went to Asda for a few uh, bottles of water and a, a strawberry as So nothing like Scottish football, is it? But... Yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was a bit bizarre. Obviously, the Queen has came through and, yeah, obviously I had to focus on the game. Obviously to Alison at this point because um, my daughter hasn't asked for a strawberry yazoo yet, but what is a strawberry yazoo? I think it's a protein thing. I don't actually know. Milk. I think it's like is it? Strawberry yeah. milk. Yeah. Is it not got like there's some kind of qualities? I'm in not it sure what's in it, but it's a strawberry milk. <laughs> and if it's and if it's something that gives them a last minute goal against oh, heart, I'm not, I'm keep drinking it. Yep. <laughs> um, Ruffy, I am going to put my hand in my heart and say I thought Hearts absolutely outclassed them. I thought they had better options back, middle, front. A top drawer goalkeeper we know in Craig Gordon, but I just thought they were more organised and structured. I'm going to cut his hips some slack because I think Tam's right. Lee Johnson is slowly but surely going to mould this team together. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. In a derby game, whoever gets the first goal puts you on the back foot, and, and it, that was the case. You could see they were shell shocked, you know, for 15, 20 minutes after that, and then you think you're getting a goal, and Craig Gordon makes an unbelievable save as he usually does. You know, and then after that, you know, chances come and go. Not clear-cut chances then like that. But I think uh, Tam's right. If Barry Mackay sticks that away at one nothing, there is only going to be one winner. But all credit to Hibs who just kept battling away. You know, and it's, Tam said again, they, they try to sit on their one nothing. You know, and Hibs kept coming forward and coming forward. But I can't believe there's nobody talking about the, the Shanklin goal. You know the uh, when, the pass. When, no, no, the the, no, the the pass was magnificent. Yeah, the, the hand is it, when is your is your arm a hand, or is it just your hand? That bit there, and that bit up there. Is this bit no count? Is this bit no count from here? 
but that's uh, a, that's a handball. Well, that's a handball. I, thought, yeah. well, I thought it happened there. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I think there's there. a suggestion. I don't think to be it was fair, a shoulder. To be fair to the journals, Ruffy, there is a suggestion in the papers of would VAR have ruled out Shankman's goal. But nevertheless, it was a great pass by Barry Mackay. Oh. Yeah, it made the goal. It, yeah. made the, it was a good finish, but yeah, I thought it was quite ambiguous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, lots of people telling us um, Yazoo is flavoured toilet water. Um, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I, get your, I get your gist of it. Um, as far as Hearts are concerned, one nothing cruising. All he needed was time management to see out the game. Robbie Nielsen, uh, as you would expect, disappointed. We used to put the game to bed, you know. Within the second half, we didn't do it, so it's always going to be like that. You know, they throw everything in the kitchen sink at you, you know, to get a knockdown, and they're hoping for that wee break, which they got, you know, to the credit, and we didn't manage to hold it. So, you know, we just have to learn from it. I think we probably could have managed it a wee bit better, and that when we got into these more advanced areas, we were looking to kill the game a wee bit more, but we didn't. There's chances, and I'll tell you, there was a double save, Ruffy, from David Marshall, which was yeah. top drawer. Well, his foot, yeah, and he, he, it was just the reaction after he'd made the save. He knew Barry Mackay was coming in just to place it, and he just threw his body in front of it. It luckily hit him and went over the bar. But, I mean, that save and the Craig Gordon save were, were two top drawers. Absolutely. Um, and remember, Barry Mackay is the same as Barry Mackay. Um, he used to <laughs> the big man, he just, just makes them up, Ali, if he can't pronounce it, doesn't he? <laughs> Brilliant. By the way, Ruffy, uh, the one thing I'm worried about, and you're a, obviously a director who's, who's got this, this is creeping in to Scottish football. Mm -hmm. um, kids running onto the park, and of course, Alec Cochran. There will be an investigation by Hibs, but Alec Cochran, I was watching from the press box, and they're throwing things at him, and one of them, a lighter, hit him, and that could have been serious damage. Well, in all fairness, I think Hibs have sorted it out before. You know, they, they've got all the facility, all the CCTV. I'm sure they will act. They've got to act. They've got to pinpoint the person who threw it. It might be difficult with the chips. You know, that looked as if it was two or three people that were yeah. throwing chips. Yeah. It, it was, was, a, it was one, a big bag of chips. Yeah. Bag, Hopefully you know. it wasn't assaulted. But no, to be serious, it's got to be stopped. Do you know what? It's early. <laughs> what You've you gone say? too early. It's the first that, yellow. It's the first Sorry. yellow. You know, oh, oh, they weren't but, assaulted. No, but um, it, has to, it has to stop. <laughs> it really has to stop. And the people have to be punished. I'm, I'm going to hop on again. We need to stop. I know it's, it's, it's spoiling the game. We need to stop players going into the crowd. I mean, there's a couple of instances at the weekend. There was people getting hurt. Yeah. You no, know, just pushing forward and could have, uh, young kids as well. Yeah. So, Ruffy, when Martin else. Boyle scored, Ugh. it was just. He kids. But he never went into the crowd. No, I know, but the, he just, just went up the side. It was side. all kids running onto the park. Now, That's I, I'm not being a killjoy here, Ali. The fact is, it's creeping into the game on a regular basis. Uh, I mean, at one point when they were just ushering the kids off. Um, there was a dad with his son taking a selfie right next to the goals. I'm thinking, they must think, they must think, oh, we're not going to get arrested. We're going to get away with this. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think it started maybe with isolated incidents where you saw some kids running on and asking for a shirt, like, or, or running on either uh, at the end of a warm-up or at the end of the game and sort of getting close to a player and, and asking for a shirt and getting lucky with it. So it encourages more then to follow, but I would agree with you, I think um, I think it's silly. I think if you're there as a parent, I think you give out the message. You sit in your seat, that's where you've got to be. You don't go anywhere near the park. If you do, you can end up banned. You could end up not being allowed to go. And I think for safety reasons, I think you've got to adhere to it. Before we get on to um, the games up at Dingwall, Ross County, <coughs> against uh, Celtic Rangers Kilmarnock, we're going to talk about Aberdeen St Mirren as well as Dundee United uh, Livingston and Motherwell St Johnston. Tam, uh, one other little bugbear which is creeping into the game, which I, I really would like to see the referees have a long, hard think about. Down south, the referees are starting to try and let the game flow. Of the two games I was at at the weekend, I thought Willie Collum and John Beaton just did not allow the game to flow. It was whistle happy at every opportunity. Yeah, I think it's. I think in Edinburgh Derby is obviously a difficult one to referee. I've played plenty myself. You know, there's always loads of fouls and niggles. And but you're right. I thought John Beaton was over. You know, over officiating you know, at times. He could have just let the, the game play, as you said, yeah. and then brought it back when the ball went out or something. Had a word with somebody rather than just keeping breaking up the play. I think the first half. You know, there was so many stoppages. I don't, I don't know how long the ball was in play. It couldn't have been long, and that didn't add to the spectacle. So you're right. I think there's got to be a bit of more common sense where you can let the game flow, and then when the ball goes out of play, 
then you go and have a word with the person who done it and says, listen, behave yourself. Yeah, well, I think we need to look at that, Ruffy. We need to embrace what they're doing down south because more and more you're seeing the game, you know, players naturally will try and cheat to get their, their team, uh, you know, a bonus, a free kick somewhere. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the other thing that annoys the life out of me, Ruffy. They're all lying about wasting time. Mm. You know, oh, suddenly I've got cramp. And it just, do you know what it is? It's cheating the supporters out of the 90 minutes that they've paid to see. Yeah, well, I think there was a, a start out there. The ball's not on the, the part that often. The 90 minutes is only about 59 mm -hmm. minutes of the 90. So it's a tough one for the referees because if they don't start throwing cards about, people say, why do you know... Why did you not know, sort that out early on? And the, the, sometimes they let it go, and then they let it go, and players then, as you say, say, "Well, he's letting us away with this. I'll just have a mm -hmm. have another hit at him." So they're caught in a dilemma, you know. When they do they do they put put it down right away? Right, that's not going to be tolerated, and everybody else knows if I do that, I'm going to get a yellow card. So. It's up to them to decide. Absolutely. Give us your views on that. Um, I think the general consensus here is that Hearts were the better team, but Hibbs, uh, with the Roy the Rovers man himself wearing the number 77, Martin Boyle come up trumps. Give us your thoughts on Lee Johnson's comments. He reckons that uh, you know there's tremendous potential there at Hibbs, and once he gets you know players that I saw in the stand, Kevin Nisbet still to come back. Mm -hmm. um, you've got Aidan McGeady, possibly two months, I'm hearing, Tam. Um, before he uh, pulls on a jersey again. But nevertheless, there are players they might want to add and the players he's got coming back. Yeah, they have. They've got a few. As you said, McGeady and Nisbet's obviously a big player. Uh, Kyle McGuinness is another one who's, who's been out injured, who would probably get been in the starting lineup. So Hibs have got a decent squad, but it's going to take time. You know, yesterday they had a very, very young uh, front three. You know, Johan, uh, Melkerson and Henderson. You know, yeah. three very young, young players. And Johan looks good. Aye, good pace. He, I think he'd, he'd probably be better playing up front with someone. I don't think he can lead the line himself and hold the ball up, but he'd maybe be a good, good pairing with the likes of Doidge. So, listen, he's got a few options up there, but they need time to settle in. Yeah, absolutely. OK. Uh, Ross County 1, Celtic 3. Um, in the end, Celtic with uh, too much for Malky Mackay's side. Uh, Ange Postecoglou just basically reckons over the 90 minutes his side were in complete control. In real difficult conditions, I thought we controlled the game from start to finish and uh, minimised their threats. Um, you know, obviously they're a big, strong team, but they hardly got into our box apart from set pieces. And it, even though they kind of you know, a lot of bodies behind the ball, um, we still found our openings. We were still sort of really clever in the way we got in behind them. So he reckons they dominated, and you would dominate with the quality that Celtic had at their disposal in the end, even as they were pegged back, there was still the class there of Jota to provide the assists. Yeah, I thought Jota really shone over the, the course of 90 minutes. I think that th all three assists that he he had, um, I actually thought there was a really pivotal moment in the game. I thought the Joe Hart save from Edwards' free kick it, when it was still at 1-1 really uh, gave Celtic the impetus to go and, and try and turn the screw and look for the second goal. I think it was a really important moment in the game. But I think for all Celtic's possession in that first half, I think uh, I think it was over 80% possession or whatever, I think they toiled to create some really genuine chances. I think it opened up a bit more in the second half. But I think they're another team. I think they'll get better as, and stronger as time goes on. I think you can see that they've not had any competitive games this summer, the way that normally they would begin into the league campaign in the back of Champions League qualifiers. I think you can see that they're still a, maybe missing a bit of an edge to it, but I think it'll come. It was a good goal Abada scored in the game. I was just looking there at his stats, Ruffy. 16 goals last season for a guy who's only 20. Yeah, and every, everybody talks about Jota, you know, and other players in the team. He doesn't seem to get the same credit but certainly he's chipped in with some fantastic goals last year and that the, the third one was was superb but I mean I, I, I get where the Celtic manager's coming for they controlled the game with the possession but if you lose a goal with six minutes to go there's a bit of pressure there you know and it just shows you that if you continue to attack and you continue to create chances sometimes you get get goals late on in games and that's that's what they do they've got so much pressure from a point of view of I'm quite complimentary about Ross County because I like the way they play football but there's a lot of people angry at the way they went about their business maybe being a bit over physical certainly on our feed today quite a few of them mentioning um, you know the way that the tackles were flying in from Ross County did you pick that up Tom? I, I didn't see the game live obviously I just watched the highlights uh, like most people and yeah there was a few probably tackles that were probably over 
and over the edge. But I think when you're when you're a team, you're playing against Celtic Rangers. You've got to get tight to them. You've got to try and be physical. Uh, or else they'll just play around you. And uh, obviously there's a line you cross. Maybe Ross County did cross it a couple of times, but. I think when you're playing against quality, you've got to try and get close to them. If you stand off your Jotas and your Abadas and your Kyogos, then they're going to murder you. And uh, I think that the key player, uh, again, was Jota. I think his delivery uh, for the first two goals, particularly the second goal, uh, for Jens to score was, was outstanding. And he started the season on fire. He's, he's currently the best player in the league. Yeah, it just it'd be interesting to see this season how Celtic deal with um, set pieces from the opposition. I mean, Yen's a bit raw, caught out with Yakaviti, but it'll be interesting to see how they handle the set pieces when he eventually says, this is my back four or, or my back three. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think it's been an Achilles heel for Celtic at times in recent seasons. I think it will be interesting to see who the back four is, just when everyone is fit and available and Carl Starfelt's back up to speed. Stephen Welsh was, uh, was ill at the weekend. Uh, and then you've got Jens as well. I thought, yeah, I thought Jens did, did all right. I, yeah. I would agree with you. I think he looked a bit, a bit raw. Maybe no real surprise. He didn't have a lot of game time last season either. But um, yeah, I think it is quite intriguing to see what the favoured back four will be, especially when you think that there's Champions League games on the horizon too. Yeah, absolutely. If you're Celtic fans out there, give us your thoughts on Jota. What about Abada? Jens, as Alison has mentioned as well, um, getting involved in, and let's not forget, Kyogo. So, so, so an amazing yeah. situation. I haven't even mentioned Kyogo with his side footed goal, but you know he's got a full season ahead of him now, Ruffy, but he hopes he's going to avoid the injuries, and, and I think Celtic fans are expecting him to be bagging 20 oh, yeah. goals minimum. Well, that, that's what we say about Rangers and Celtic. You know, if you're centre forward and the teams you've got to be scoring 20 plus yeah, and that's where sometimes that you can win the league with that you know we saw Lee Griffiths getting 41 season you know and I, I, I think there will be somebody in the Rangers and the Celtic team will beat 30 this year yeah on to the Rangers game um, 2 nothing against Kilmarnock um, comfortable 18 shots four of them on target uh, I was surprised actually some people I'm uh, reading some of the journals talking about whether Cholak is is under pressure even to get a start. They're not happy with his movement. He scores a goal. I mean, I don't know what more the boy can do in the early early part of the season. He's still got to settle into what Rangers' style is, even though the hero is is Morelos. Yeah, I think when you're a striker and you go to Celtic Rangers, you've got to hit the ground running. You don't get time. You don't get time to settle in at the old firm. Um, you're instantly judged. Um, he's, he's not been great in the European, ga the European game. And then I think he didn't have a great game on, on Saturday, but he got the goal. In the second half, you know, to get Rangers off and running, and, and Morelos comes on and seals it. it. Ends up a comfortable win for, for Rangers, but the highlights come out of a couple of opportunities. So I still think Rangers are still to hit their stride. You know, you, you look at last season, they were, in the first half, particularly at Ibrox, they were blowing teams away, you know, two and three, nothing up at half time. So they really need to up it on Tuesday to beat a, a better quality side. And Morelos back, Kent back will make a huge difference to this Rangers team because without them, I don't think they'll go through. So I think they've got to have the, those two in the starting lineup because they're two European stalwarts for Rangers over the last couple of years. Yeah, I, I, I actually, I mean, I think it's a big year for Kent. I think he could really light up the the, the league um, if he, you know, really concentrates on that end product. I also think he could chip in with more goals, Ali. But there's a supporting cast that uh, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst is building. The only problem with it uh, in the early part of a season is if you're building a new team and you're putting together little bits of the jigsaw to try and supplement what re the team that reached the, the Europa League final last season, you know, it, if they go to Union, suddenly, you know, everybody's going crazy. They'll all go mental. It's, you know, there'll be nothing but negative press about it. I think that's just the demands of when you play at a big club. I think what happened yesterday doesn't matter. I think it's always about the here and the now. I think the demands remain ever present. I don't think you can ever rest on your laurels and point to what you've done previously. And and I think the danger of going out in, in European qualifiers so early and going out now is that it can leave a hangover. I think it can set a tone around the club and it, it, it takes a while to dissipate. It takes a while to for everyone to rouse themselves and go again. So I think you can't underestimate the magnitude of this week's game at all. I think it's a huge game for Rangers. I think it's a very it's an odd scoreline <coughs> almost, I think. Um I think if, if Rangers get an early goal, then I think they can change it. I think they have enough to go and change it, but it's a it, it, it it's a tightrope that they're on. Yeah, the teams that I like watching, Ruffy, are the teams with wingers. 
the teams who've got players who can supply. You know, Rangers will look to the likes of Matondo, they'll look to the likes of Kent, and then everybody else in that box is going to try and feed off the supply. Um, Hibbs getting down the flank, Ewan uh, got down the flank to cut the ball back for Boyle. It's that type of player, the, the creativity that I, that I think will bring the, the biggest reward for some of the teams, even Ross County with uh, Aruba Edwards. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's what Van Bronckhurst has done. He, I think he's changed it a wee bit. He, he, he's got Ryan Kent wider than what he usually is and floating about. He likes to see people get into the byline, and if you've got a big centre forward in there, you've got to give him the supply. It's either that or somebody scores a screamer for 20, 30 yards, because teams are so well organised now that you don't generally get playing through the middle. You know, that, that you'd have to be a poor defence for that to happen. So, you know, that, yeah, it's got to be good deliveries into the box. I just think Rangers' problem is there's four or five of these guys, the new signings, who are now getting into a situation that they weren't in before. You know, last year Rangers had the, the team rolling along, quarter-final, semi-final, same team, same players, same subs. Now in this game coming up, there's four or five maybe new signings are going into a situation tomorrow night that they've never ever been in before so it depends on how they handle it yeah well that uh, that for me is uh, that sums up football if you if you reach the Europa League final um, you win the Scottish Cup and you're a manager you think to yourself well that's fine now I need to take it on another level I mean I like to look at the boy Tillman Stephen Davis come on you know Excellent. in that game was first Excellent. class yeah. um, Morelos comes back and scores Tom Lawrence looks as if he's uh, a player that could contribute greatly to Rangers so I think as Ruffy said okay it's a juggling act but I think he's brought in some really good players that will enhance what, what they watched last season yeah I, th I think he has brought good players in but it takes time to settle and uh, you know big Champions League qualifier you know, these are the games that you're judged on when you're at Celtic Rangers. You've got to try and win these games. You know, Rangers were huge favourites against Malmo last year. You know, particularly when Malmo went down to ten men, and, and Malmo still went through. And I think this team are better than Malmo. Um, and it's arguable as, as Rangers are a better team now than they were last season under Stephen Gerrard. I think you could argue both ways. So, do you think Union are better than Malmo? I think they're a better side than Malmo. Yes. Wow. On what I've seen uh, um, in the first leg, I thought Rangers should have beat Malmo last year. I thought Rangers should have beat them. Um, so. It all depends on, as, as Alison said, an early goal. If Rangers can get that early goal, they could get spooked and it could be 2 or 3 nothing, and Rangers could win the game. But I think if they score early doors, it'll be interesting to see how Rangers react and the new players react when the fans are, are rolling at them and on their backs. Yeah, um, here's what Giovanni Van Bronckhurst had to say ahead of that game. Um, my objective and desire to be in the Champions League again next week. Um, we were very disappointed as a group. We now have a chance to overturn that and put in a performance. We have to make sure our performance is better than last week to help create an atmosphere that makes it difficult for the visiting team. Last week is not our normal level in Europe. Our standards and performance have to be on a high level tomorrow. We always have confidence no matter who we face at home. And and that for me sums it up. Um, Ali, I think, I, th I thought Union were mediocre. I thought Rangers were, were, it was more for me about how poor Rangers were. I would agree with you. I thought in the first 20, 25 minutes, I thought Union gave the ball away loads. I thought they, they, they looked sloppy. I, I didn't look, think it looked particularly cohesive. And even then, though, prior to that first goal, they'd get in behind a couple of times. He'd posted notice of their threat. I think there were alarm bells. Uh, I think Ibrox makes a difference. I think the fact that you have a, a full stadium, this is a crowd that have, have relished the European seasons across the bread for the last few years. I think there'll be significant back. And I think 2-0, it, it, it's possible to overturn it. I think it's not, it's not got away from them just yet. But at the same time, you don't want to be going out gung-ho looking for that first early goal, leaving yourself wide open and conceding a third, which could kill the tie off eventually. I think you have to be quite canny about it. And I think this is a, a Rangers team who are a bit more streetwise in European football just because of the experience of recent seasons. And I don't think you would say it's it's over. I don't think it's beyond them just yet, but I think you need to see a vast improvement on, on what you saw last, last week. I'm going to put my neck on the line, Ruffy. Um, quite simply because I wasn't that impressed with Union and I think Rangers can go up another level um, certainly another couple of levels if it's, if it's against uh, that Belgian outfit I think they'll I think they'll overturn it I think they'll win through um, against Union and I'm, I am open to being absolutely battered on Wednesday if that doesn't happen because they should be beating Union 
Yeah, I think they're good enough to beat Union 2 nothing in 90 minutes. And if they beat them You love your extra time and your penalties, yeah, don't you? And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> if they get to extra time, uh, that team have got to go for it. You know, and I think that's when Rangers will open them up. Uh, and they'll, they'll eventually go through. Yeah. Um, Tom, where are you going with this? You, you're the only one in this. I'm going to get to Ali's thoughts in two seconds, but you? If Kent and Morellas both start, then I think they've got a chance. If they don't, then I don't think they'll go through. So I'd like to see the team first, but I think they're bang up against it. I think they're a decent side. Yeah, OK. So let's just say Kent and Morellas do start. I think Rangers will go th might just go through. Yeah. If they don't, they won't go through. OK, so that's his whole basis <laughs> of his opinion. Kent Morella's start, Rangers are through. What about yourself, Ali? I would agree, I think. Yeah. I think oh, you want to wait and see the team again as well? I do think the What happened to your punditry, Ali? Come on. That's exactly one poor weekend. <laughs> 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 uh, but I, I think they do offer, I think they offer a, a lift for everyone round about them for a start, but I do think they, they have a bit of quality as well. I think so much depends on the opening 15, 20 minutes. I think if Rangers get an early goal, I think it's you know game on. I think they'll go for it. The longer the game goes on without it, I think the harder it gets. But if you're asking me for an opinion, I think Rangers will prevail and I think they will go through. OK then. A uh, big apology to everyone who um, we've wasted 38 seconds of your time there until eventually Ali <laughs> fired out that Rangers are going through. Wow, you're turning into Ruffy by the way. That's how Tam and I put you two over there now. You know, long-winded and then eventually, boom, he's in. OK, uh, uh, Ali's going for Rangers. Tam's waiting to see the team sheet and everything else and the crowd attendance. Uh, and Ruffy, you're going for them after extra time. Saying, yeah. OK, I'm happy with that, right? Um, what about Aber? Do you think they'll play in goal? Uh, oh, good, McLaughlin. I think he's. I think he's just. He's. He's sticking to his guns. Got he can he drop him there? He, he can't. Yeah. I think he's going to... He, if he's going to drop him, he'd have dropped him after the... Hold on, have you heard something? No, no, at no. all. You know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just wondering what Alan McGregor must be saying to himself. You know, when yeah. it's not like, you know, you play that game, you play that game, as it was last year. Maybe McGregor will play the cup matches. Maybe he'll play a League Cup and, and Scottish Cup to add to his collection. Yeah. It'd be interesting knows? to see if he's quite happy with that. I think uh, the other thing about it, Ali, you've got to have good goalkeepers, or, you know, good goalkeeper number one and number two and number three sometimes. I think you do. I have to say, I would have McGregor over McLaughlin. So would I. He's a better keeper, but right now I think he's made his, he, he's made his uh, decision. He's made right? he's made he's it. There's no way he'll it. change it now. Nope, no. But... Uh, I think um, I think Alan McGregor will probably feel quite aggrieved. Yeah. Call. Now uh, Aberdeen um, spanked St Mirren, mm -hmm. uh, albeit that uh, eventually when I was at Fir Park and I, uh, you know the goal started coming and I thought, oh Aberdeen, <laughs> they're uh, they're flying. I don't know why you're smiling. <laughs> they were playing ten men. I mean Declan Gallagher gets sent off. He could have got sent off for the first challenge. It was a bad one on the boys' ankle. I thought it was <clears> a, a debate for a red card, Ruffy. Yeah, it was a bad one, you know, and again, the referee's got to make a decision, you know, is it a straight red or does he give him a chance? But, I mean, how can he get out of the road of the second, the second book? Well, he his hands on, his hands he's, on the ground. But his whole body's in a natural position to block it. on the ground. It's a penalty. <laughs> oh. His whole body's gone down to block the, the, the ball. No, I thought he was on the ground before the boy had the shot. But even if he is on the ground, even if he How is on... going to get out of the road? How, you get your hand the on the thing. How do you get it out of the road? He's had the shot ten yards away from him. It's not as if it's nah, the Rangers' nah, penalty where he's... I just thought it was a bad decision. Not a penalty? Not a penalty for me. All right, OK. <laughs> Ali? No, I disagree. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm just kidding well, him. Yes. That's what it's like. Listen, um, I thought it was a penalty. Did you? Penalty? Yeah. Penalty? Penalty all day wrong. Don't worry about that, Ruffy. And it was a well, wait a minute. Let's, let's get, get to the point here. Aberdeen got all three points. They won 4 1. There are some players in there I'm looking at. I mean, the boy Leighton Clarkson. What a strike that was. He, he, he knew that morning. He was a Martin Boyle situation, yeah. I think. Suddenly he's thrust in. He's, he's, been, he's been signed. And then bang, you're out there playing and he hits an absolute screamer. Yeah, well, you, you see how they're doing during the week, you know, and you think they're good enough in training, then why not give them a shout? But I think, obviously. The 4 1 flattered Aberdeen a wee bit, you know, obviously with the sending off. There certainly was a good goal, can't take it away for that. But the last goal, which is, I think, St. Murmur just at sixes and sevens, and I think they're mm. now they're now falling into the trap mm. <laughs> of us all saying, oh, it could be St. Murmur this year, because they've done nothing. The boy Clarkson signed, yeah. he signed from uh, Liverpool on loan. Yeah. Once Clarkson hits top gear, I think he'll be excellent. 
Well, that's two in the that's two in the program, Ali, <laughs> and and I think you know. I probably I'd probably go for a younger pundit somewhere <laughs> who's clueless rather than him just firing in his gags. He's turning yeah, it. He's, t- he's, he's, he's turning it honestly, <laughs> and he's actually waiting for them as well. You can see it coming in his eyes. Uh, anyway, apart from anything else, what about Saint Mirren? Because I, I I fear for Stephen. I fear for him because you know it's it's not going according to plan at the moment. I hear rumblings in the background. I think he should be given time to build a team. I don't know if he'll have that luxury of, of too much time. I think on the evidence that you've seen towards the end of last season and the opening to this season, I, I, I don't know if there's a clear direction about where St Mirren are going. And I think the fear is, when it's like this, it's like the situation with Motherwell, you think you can't sleepwalk almost going into a campaign where you could put yourself in danger of relegation. Yeah, and, and, and I have to be complimentary towards Aberdeen, not because it's in any kind of legal contract, Tam, but quite simply, he's got 10 new signings, mm-hmm. and slowly but surely I could start to see nice little patterns of play from them. Yeah, I thought that, listen, it's not it's not always easy to, to play against 10 men. You know, they, they sit in and they make it hard for you, but I thought Aberdeen, some of the goals, obviously Clarkson, great goal, but the... You know, Lopez, the guy they signed from Benfica, the striker goes through, lovely finish, chips over the goalkeeper. Uh, but all accounts, Ramadani in the middle of the pitch has been excellent as well. Miofsky's off to a flyer with a few goals. So I like to look at Aberdeen. I said that I, I thought yeah. they were decent against Celtic, and I think they'll be they'll be up there challenging for third. I think this season, Aberdeen. I think they'll be up there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, don't forget, you can look back at um, old uh, football show programmes from any year. We've got ten years of them. And you can get the first three programmes of last year when Tam says the exact same. <laughs> Tam says the exact same thing, Ruffy. Is the steam glass still there? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> so, Ruffy, are you, do you have the no, same I'm, enthusiasm? I'm, I'm waiting to play Hearts or, or Hibs or some of the who's going to be a top six team. I mean, that. Uh, yeah, there might be. I, I was encouraged by the Aberdeen support. I, I think it's always good to see Petodre nearly full or, or, or full-ish. Yeah. Uh, I think it, it's a good atmosphere up there. So if the fans buy into them winning, you know, fair enough. But uh, if I was St Martin, I'd be in at that fixture list after the game looking to see when we're playing Motherwell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> It's a very good point. Um, and Hugh Scott says, Tam, you've been listening to Alan Shearer, Ian Wright. Um, they had a corny joke uh, on the other uh, match of the day. I know exactly where you're coming from. Valerie, <laughs> Valerie come on over. <laughs> but never, nevertheless, um, I, I think oh, Jimmy, <laughs> before we go into Morales and Johnson, Jimmy's just said to me, Peter, could you, could you ask Big Ruffy what Partick is in Gaelic? Oh, oh no! Here, <laughs> yeah. you know, come on! That bit of culture at half time. Come on! Saturday. You're getting pelters, yeah, by the way. What was culture. it? Street, Explain it to me. Oh, it was. What uh, was it? Let me try and explain this right now. It was a street, not dancing company, but this what, is a half time entertainment. It's a half time entertainment. Right. Uh, this group are going to Malawi uh, to let everybody know about the awareness of children dying from drinking. The water and the fly, I can't remember what the fly is called. Right. But they, they get... Skittle? They Tetsi. get beaten. No, it's, it might be something like yeah. that. But anyway, this was a, a group who are going over to Malawi and they're going to take this show with them to explain, to make everybody aware uh, of, obviously, people, the young kids dying in Malawi. And we gave them a chance to yeah. let everybody know, you know, and whether you liked it or not, it's a different matter. Right. So what were they doing? They were dancing. And they had big nets, the, the like big, big nets, fishing nets. Like, the thing. theme was there was a fly dressed up, a big, big fly, and you had to catch the fly. <laughs> and there was balls. <laughs> there were balls were balls. The balls were getting thrown in. It was catching this fly. Right. If you catch the fly, the kids can't what's, die. What's, oh, the, oh, what's the Gaelic thing? What's the Gaelic part? The Gaelic, part the Gaelic thing is just we've been asked by the government uh, to, to promote Gaelic uh, language. Right, okay. So it's everywhere. It's in all the... Gaelic school, not far yeah, from yeah. Oh, is that right? Mm-hmm. Just out of curiosity, if you're asked by the government to promote yeah. it, is there money involved? Uh, <laughs> no, I, no, I think no. Well, it's, not no. Cost, it's not cost, is it? Right, oh, 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 there's the director's line, if ever you've heard it, eh? I've heard it. Right, so oh, listen, right, I'm okay. going right. to. I know you, I knew there was money involved, it's simple as that. Anyway, um, St. Mirren apart, Motherwell. Uh, I mean, honestly, it was just. 
they were, they were poor, Ali. I mean, they were poor. Um, I, I don't see anything of spark in them. I see an unhappy Stephen O'Donnell, um, who clearly is rankled by his experience under Graham Alexander. Um, I, th I think Graham Alexander cut off his nose despite his face with Stephen O'Donnell on the right flank. I, no harm to Paul McGinn, but Stephen O'Donnell's a better player than Paul McGinn. And, and then, of course, over and above that, I, I don't see anything in them at the moment until they get quickly reinforcements and a manager in. And I think the problem is probably finances. I think given the, the situation, I just wonder, you know, given the, pay, the payoffs that have just been made, you wonder what the situation is or if, um, if they will bring in a manager on a permanent basis or if they'll stick with um, with Steve and, and, and go that way. But I think, on the evidence of the early part of the season, I think Motherwell, St Johnson, St Mirren are the three that you would fear for. Well, hang fire on this, and, and I'll, I'll put a case across to you uh, on this, but Motherwell were poor. Stephen Hamill clearly would like a decision on whether it's him or someone else. Um, but first and foremost, I think he accepted that it's glaringly obvious to everyone that Motherwell need 